Hello Solar Eclipse Timer users, Dr. Talipin here talking about an unusual eclipse video technique I've used to capture the observing area during an eclipse. You will probably never want to do it. It's weird yet interesting and I've done it twice in 2006 and 2019. Check it out. Let me know what you think. <laughs> Observe changes in ambient lighting. There are many videos on the internet of eclipse observing areas taken with video cameras. Hundreds of videos have been added since the 2017 eclipse. This is my video taken with a spinning video camera at the 2017 eclipse. It's really fun to see the scene go from daylight to the darkness of totality over a period of seconds. When experiencing an eclipse in person, you see that totality is not pitch black. It's not like nighttime darkness. And modern day video cameras do a good job of documenting the change to the darkness of totality. But something has interested me about all the videos on the internet, even those I saw after my first two eclipses in 2001 and 2002. They are all taken with video cameras on automatic mode which is fine. I don't have a problem with that. In all of the videos, the cameras are adjusting themselves. They properly expose the image when the lighting is bright, and then they continually adjust to maintain a balanced exposure, all the way into the dimness of totality, as seen in my video. At that point, they have made their maximum adjustments, electronically opening the aperture and slowing the shutter speed to gather as much light as they can to expose the scene during totality for you. So even at the very low lighting level during totality, the cameras can adjust enough to allow you to see people and structures in the scene. Modern day video cameras are amazing. Prior to the 2006 eclipse, I had an idea to video the change in ambient lighting during an eclipse in a different way. I planned to put a video camera in manual mode, fixing the exposure. This would prevent it from making adjustments to compensate for the change in lighting and force it to just document the decreasing light. This is the video, and it is starting eight and a half minutes before totality. The second timer is counting up. My idea was to start the video camera a little overexposed in manual mode and just let it run and see how the change in lighting looked if a camera could not change the exposure. Again, I wanted to document the natural dimming of light. The problem was I could not find any documentation for anyone else trying to do this. So I had no idea about where to start the exposure. So in 2006, I started it just slightly overexposed. Well, this first attempt at this technique was only partially successful. It worked to document the progressively smooth decrease in the lighting, and that was really interesting. But during totality, the video went to black. Nothing in the observing area was visible, and that is not the way totality is. The manual settings I chose were just too dim, meaning I did not start out overexposed enough. I misjudged the amount of overexposure needed at the start to end up being able to see things during totality. But remember, I could not find any other attempts to try this, so I was completely guessing. In 2017, I did not repeat this experiment, but for the 2019 eclipse, I wanted to do it again. Learning from my experience in 2006, this time I took a video camera and planned to use settings that would max out the overexposure. Unlike DSLR cameras, most video cameras do not offer a complete manual mode, but allow choosing shutter or aperture priority. So I put the camera in shutter priority and made the shutter as slow as possible at one eighth of a second. I had to shut off automatic gain control. Then I manually set the EV compensation to plus three. This was as overexposed as this video camera could get. In 2019, the experiment worked, but I don't want to start by showing you the overexposed section first. I want to start by showing you how it ended up exposing totality. These are screenshots of totality taken from the video obtained with this camera you can see that these are reasonably close to what you have seen on the internet 
when people were doing videos using automatic mode through the partial phases and then going into totality. These shots may be a little dark, but you can make out people, the background, and the lit horizon. But remember, these images are not the result of automatic mode. They are the end result of an overexposure guess. But this is where it gets interesting. I let this camera run for about 10 minutes after totality. Do you want to see how overexposed the image will get when sunlight returns and the camera cannot adjust? I am going to play a sped up video starting in totality and then the next 10 minutes. Remember, the camera cannot adjust its exposure. Here we go. Let's see how bright the image gets. It's amazing how bright it gets immediately after third contact with just a sliver of a crescent sun. And then how overexposed the image gets in the initial 10 minutes as more and more light returns. I had no idea in 2006 when my totality went to black that I would have needed to start this overexposed. So now let me play the other portion of the video, the portion before totality. We're starting overexposed about 10 minutes before second contact, and we will watch it go into the darkness of totality. In 2019, with this starting exposure, a complete guess, I had no idea what would happen. Perhaps I was starting too overexposed, and totality would not look dark at all. I had no idea. It ended up being a reasonably good exposure at totality. Now, what really makes this interesting is that I have observation site Lux data from this eclipse. This is a graph of the decrease in Lux from first contact to totality. This graph shows a measurement of the ambient lighting at the observing site, not pointing at the sun. My manual mode video starts about 10 minutes before second contact at this spot on the graph. It's approximately 800 Lux. But regarding our visualization of the site, it's amazing that even at a 90% decrease in Lux, at 10 minutes before totality, the surroundings still look like normal daytime to us. This is because our eye brain system is working like an auto exposure camera, properly exposing the scene for us. But the camera, when set on manual mode settings, is blown out. Anyone that has been to an eclipse has experienced this phenomena of it appearing not getting dark until just before totality. I have other videos on eclipse ambient lighting and I will put the links in the description. This is the progression of the partial phases at the 2019 eclipse and this is the size of the crescent at just under 10 minutes before second contact. It's small and the lux at the observing site is proportionally less. But regarding our vision, it still looks like regular daytime. This is an image from another camera I had at the eclipse that was working in automatic mode. It was taking wide angle pictures of my sharp and fuzzy shadow experiment. This image is at 10 minutes before totality at approximately 800 lux. I show this image just to demonstrate that cameras in automatic mode adjust well and have plenty of light to create a normally exposed image, even with the ambient lux decreased by 90%. This is just like our eye brain system. This video technique is something that has been intriguing to me. Since I messed it up in 2006, I had to try it again in 2019, and I wanted to share it with you. It may not be something you would want to do, but if you did, I've shown you how to set up a video camera and how overexposed you have to start. If you have a DSLR camera that can shoot video in full manual mode, before the eclipse, you must learn how to set it up to shoot overexposed video while using live view. Then at the eclipse, about 12 minutes before totality, using live view, adjust the exposure settings to get an image that looks approximately this overexposed in the LCD screen. After you set the overexposure, just let it record through totality and see what you get. It's fun to see it happen and it reveals some interesting things. First, it makes you appreciate your eye brain visual system how much it can compensate for the slowly dimming light during an eclipse. It allows you to have a properly exposed scene from first contact all the way to just before totality, a huge decrease in the lux level, 
greater than a 95% decrease, but very little change in how you see your surroundings until the very end. Second, it makes you appreciate the sophisticated technology of the automatic exposure in cameras. Thank you for watching this Solar Eclipse Timer episode. I hope you learned something about solar eclipses. My goal is to make this YouTube channel the absolute best place for people to prepare for upcoming eclipses. So download my app and plan to get to the path of the next solar eclipse. It's a wonderful thing to witness. Please subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below and also click the little bell that pops up. Then you will be notified when I release new episodes about solar eclipses. Post comments and questions. Thank you again. I appreciate your time.